People who buy limited edition models are dumb. Why would you get suckered into pulling the trigger just because they made thousands instead of tens of thousands? I'm not dumb though, I needed all these. Limited edition models are a form of FOMO, the fear of missing out, which is a bad thing. It's a manipulation. It's an attempt by companies to coerce customers into buying. Like it's objectively bad, but it's also kind of fun, right? Let me put on my shill hat for a second. All entertainment is exchanging money for emotional manipulation. I mean, yeah, some things are free. You can go for a walk or look at a tree, but if you want to have some real fun, you have to pay. Roller coasters make you feel fear and excitement for the cost of a park ticket. Movies make you feel intrigued or sympathetic, but you still have to buy, rent, or stream for the privilege. Miniatures are in the same boat. You want to experience the tactile enjoyment of building a model, the artistic satisfaction of painting, and the triumph of using that model on the tabletop? Well, you have to pay. And limited edition adds another layer to that transaction. In the world of miniature wargaming, few things spark the same amount of desire and panic as limited edition models. You see something like Inquisitor Erasmus Cartavolnus, or you know, maybe you see Soulblight Gravelords Anasta Malkorian Vampire Lord, or you know, maybe you see a pilot Luke Skywalker and you think, oh yeah, I need that model and it's only available right now, so I have to buy. That reaction is part of the fun. That feeling you get in your gut of I need it, I want it, I'm gonna try to get it, is fine. I'm not saying FOMO is great and we should all just buy everything. What I'm saying is I don't have a problem with cool count as or alternate sculpts that are limited in number and cost the same as a regular model. I think it adds to the excitement of the miniature hobby. I do have a problem with very expensive limited edition bundle boxes, but that's a story for another day. Making something limited edition is supposed to increase demand and create greater sense of value in that thing. But when it's just a model, we know exactly what the value is going to be and the value is subjective. And not every limited edition model is just a marketing strategy. I have a lot of miniatures for the game uh, Mars Attacks by Mantic from 2015, and that game is no longer made. So technically, the entire model range is limited edition. Same with Mongoose Publishing's 2007 game Starship Troopers. That game has been out of production for years, so every time I see one of those miniatures, I get the same butterflies in my stomach of, ooh, I should buy that right now. I think limited edition models are just another part of the hobby and I have maybe indulged a few too many times because I have not only a pile of shame, but I have a limited edition miniatures pile of shame. And so I think it is time to tackle this most shameful of collections. I'm gonna paint these miniatures up, but I'm not just going to paint them. I am going to really put all of my efforts into painting these models. Because they're limited edition, I feel like I have a lot more attachment and I I have a lot more value that I place on these miniatures, so I want to get the maximum amount of enjoyment and satisfaction out of these miniatures. So I am going to be painting full ball sack. It's time to get to work. All right, let's get this limited edition paint party started hot with Inquisitor Erasmus Cartavolnus, my newest limited edition model. I could use a little more light. Perfect. Oh, what's this you ask? Well, that brings us to today's sponsor. Cobalt Keep, makers of the highest quality magnet ready wargaming bases and display cases have successfully kickstarted their newest product, the Paint Hilt Pro, and they're bringing it to their website. It's a comfortable full grip painting handle with a magnetic rotating cap letting you spin the model to get the perfect angle. It also has a gooseneck bright white LED light rechargeable by USB-C, perfect for getting light right where it needs to be. This handle is perfect for getting painting done even when you don't have all your tools on hand. Cobalt Keep also makes magnet ready painting handles in their painting hilts in both standard and XL size. These are designed to hold onto Cobalt Keep bases perfectly, although I find they also hold other bases just fine with some poster tack. These handles are super comfortable, and where other paint handles pinch the base, not letting you reach everything, cobalt bases hold the base from underneath, letting you reach everywhere. If you're looking for the perfect system to hold your minis while you paint them, there is nothing better than cobalt key painting hilts. If you shop with the code EOB10, you can get 10% off all hilt products. And a big thanks to Cobalt Keep for sponsoring this video and helping me defeat my pile of shame. This model is actually from this year. It is the Warhammer 2022 birthday model, where the stores have a birthday and you get to buy the limited edition models. And it's kind of a flip-flop of the Warhammer Day miniatures, where there was a really, really cool Age of Sigmar model in the Vampire lore that I got. 
and kind of an okay model with the Blade Guard veteran lieutenant, which is kind of lame. Actually, I think it was a Blade Guard sergeant, which is even worse. It's just an alternate for a normal unit. But this model, the Lord Inquisitor, is badass compared to the Gut Ripper boss for Age of Sigmar. Kind of lame, just an alternate normal troop. But I think the Inquisitors are the perfect thing to do a limited edition model on because people who love Inquisitors absolutely love Inquisitors. And everybody else does not care at all, which is great for a limited edition model. It gives the people who want it something to get, but nobody else feels like they're really missing out because Inquisitors really aren't a big deal in Warhammer 40k. They haven't been an army since second edition. Some people make it work by like taking an Inquisitor as their warlord for an Imperial Guard army, but really the Inquisitors are just for the super weirdos who like to get into the nitty gritty of the Imperial society and I really love it. I already have two. I have Kyria Draxus, the Xenos Inquisitor, and I have a Rogue Trader Inquisitor in Terminator armor. And now I have this guy, and they always say it's that third wheel that makes it a tricycle. They also say groupings of three is what makes something in a collection, and I now have a collection of Inquisitors because this guy is done. Ooh, Inquisitor Erasmus Cartavolnus painted to the best of my abilities, and I continue to be very impressed with Army Painter's speed paints. It let me get a lot of work done on the model really quickly so I could focus on the little things that I really wanted to. One of those things being object source lighting. Object source lighting is one of those magical things that some of the best painters in the world can do. And it's so hard and amazing. It's recreating light in a 3D environment where, you know, light exists, but faking it, making it sort of 2D in a 3D model. I don't know. I tried it out on this guy to make that evil chaotic Zinchian book he's stabbing glow and it sort of works, but the whole model ended up really, really dark. So I would I would give it a, a medium success. Needs more experimentation. But overall, I really like this model. It's really cool. I like the posing. I like the like the dynamic sword stabbing of it. But you know what else is really, really cool? Inquisitor Gray Fox or Inquisitor Kyria Draxus, the other Inquisitor models that Games Workshop sells, and I think I would be just as happy with any one of those miniatures as I am with this limited edition Inquisitor. So, did I really need to buy this? No, but am I glad I kind of did? Yeah, it is really neat. But it's time to leave 40k behind for a little Age of Sigmar. All right, time for Soulblight Gravelords, Anasta Malkorion Vampire Lord. The model I definitely should not have bought. What I mean when I see, what I see, what I feel, when I dream, when I be, I'm a freak, what up? I really don't know why I bought this model. This model is from Warhammer Day 2021, and I remember being very unimpressed with the Warhammer 40k model. It was a Blade Guard veteran, uh, sergeant, or no, lieutenant. No, it was a sergeant, and it was just a normal guy. And I was really disappointed because the year before I had actually gotten the Warhammer model, the 2020 model, the Chaplain in Terminator armor, and it was super cool, and I painted it up to the best of my ability, and it was awesome but I wasn't feeling the Warhammer model from that year, but I was kinda digging the Age of Sigmar model, the Vampire Lord. And so it was the first time I'd actually bought a Games Workshop model without it being for an army, without a good reason to actually have the model. And it's just sort of sat on my shelf. I have no intention of set starting a Soul Blight, Grey Blight army. Um, I didn't think I would start one back then, but I just kind of liked the model. I bought a lot of models from other companies just to have, um, but usually it's because it's like, oh, it's from Fallout, and so I, I need to have that, or it's from Star Wars, so I need to have that. But usually I only buy Games Workshop models if I'm going to use them in game. That's how I can justify the outrageous prices that Games Workshop charges. But I just kind of liked this model, and so I decided to pick it up. And I'm kind of glad I did. I'm really enjoying painting this up. It is a little bit making me want to start a Soul Bright Blade Blot army, uh, which is bad because Games Workshop models are very expensive, but uh, it's kind of neat. 
I think my logic at the time was maybe I would turn it into a gene stealer called Magus, but I already have three, so I definitely don't need a fourth. And Games Workshop already made a really cool Lady Magus model that I have and I've painted up, so kind of weird. I don't know why I just needed to have this model when I saw it on the Warhammer community page, and so I took a trip down to my local Warhammer store, but I don't know. I think it has something to do with how Age of Sigmar models are just a little bit silly. And I like a little bit of silly. I've painted probably over 1,000 Warhammer 40k miniatures. And 40k can be silly too. But it's often just, you know, guns and pouches and armor and paint chipping and streaking grime. Where a lot of Age of Sigmar stuff just feels like it's a lot more lighthearted. And this model is definitely very silly. And it is just about done. Boom! That is a vampire lord, and boy oh boy, I had a lot of fun painting this model. It is an absolute cartoon character standing on a very realistic cobblestone base. Um, my reference material for this was the Yu-Gi-Oh card Vampire Lady, and I definitely nailed it with the jade skin and pink and red clothing. I really, really like this model. But you know what else I really, really like? That's right, our Patreon. Over there, we have new STL train packs available monthly. This month, we have Wasteland Cars, ready to drive donuts across your board. And to new patrons, we have a welcome pack that includes Dawn of War-inspired Space Marine, Imperial Guard, and Elder Terrain, all hosted by Comics, Games, and Things. We make weekly exclusive videos reviewing our patrons' minis and host Discord hangouts, and a new tier where you can join the ranks of my Black Templar Legion. If you're interested in PDF paint guides to these models, those are available to our patrons over on Patreon. As soon as I finished this model and I really took a look at it, I was kind of shocked at the juxtaposition between the very cartoony model and the really realistic base, but now that I think about it, I think I really like it, and I would be really interested to see this particular color scheme taken throughout a Soulblight Graveblight army. Maybe have all of the heroes of the faction, the vampires, painted perfectly in this style, but then have all of the death rattle skeletons and the zombies painted very, very realistically so that they really, really stand out. I feel like Age of Sigmar's wackiness just lets you do weird, interesting experiments like that. And ugh, do I do I really want to start a Soulblight Graveblight army? I mean, the real question is, if I had painted a really cool limited edition Nighthaunt model, would I really want to start a Nighthaunt army right now? And I think the answer definitely is yes. And you know what? Before I start adding things to my shopping cart, I should work on my next mini. And that is going to be from the galaxy far, far away. All right, I'm chugging along through my limited edition pile of shame. It's time for Hoth Luke Sky Potter. What? Why did it come with an extra base? He's already got a base. Contains an unpainted hard plastic miniature. This is limited edition Luke Skywalker Commander Expansion for Star Wars Legion. And in my opinion, one of the more egregious limited edition models, because this is Pilot Luke, and Pilot Luke is a really, really cool Luke. The, uh, the standard Star Wars Legion Luke Skywalker you can get is Bespin Luke, Cloud City Luke, Kind of a bad Luke in my opinion. I mean, just compared to the other Lukes, even Dagobah Luke is more interesting than Bespin Luke. I mean, Farm Boy Luke, I would take a Farm Boy Luke over Bespin Luke. Obviously, Return of the Jedi Luke, best Luke. And this guy, Pilot Luke, is the coolest. So much better than the actual model. And I think that's when limited edition models kind of suck. Everybody wants Pilot Luke, but very, very few people get to have Pilot Luke because this is a limited edition model. They're not making more of these. This is it. And actually, if you want one of these, stick around. I'll tell you how you can get one. But I do have to give Fantasy Flight a little bit of credit. It's really cool how they released this model. They gave this model to friendly local game stores. I think each store could order up to three and then they could do with them what they wanted. And I do think that that's really cool. It gives people a big incentive to go and visit their friendly local game stores and participate in the hobby. I know a lot of stores use these as um, giveaways or for prizes for tournaments. And so I do think it is really, really cool to support friendly local game stores like that, because those are really the beating heart of the wargaming world. So 
I do appreciate that they uh, they did a very good thing by doing a very bad thing and making this badass model limited edition. Also, just in terms of being a miniature, this is much better than the standard Luke Skywalker because this model is actually made out of hard polystyrene, where most Star Wars Legion models are made out of soft PVC. And I think at least all Jedi holding lightsabers or Sith should be made out of styrene because that lightsaber is straight as an arrow where a lot of the PVC lightsabers, they have a little bit of a bend from being in a little Ziploc baggie. And you don't, you don't want a floppy lightsaber. Luke Sky Potter is finished. Let me show you what I managed to do. This is my best painted Star Wars Legion model. And it better because it's, I think it's the coolest. Good old fashioned pilot Luke. I do think my pilot Luke ended up a little bit too dark. Uh, I was playing around with inks and I really like how the inks performed. They actually performed a lot like Army Painter Speed Paint or Games Workshop Contrast Paint, but the color was slightly wrong. And that is one thing I fall into a lot with Star Wars Legion models because I recognize the thing from the movies and the shows. And so I have to replicate them perfectly. So even if those colors did give me a very lovely orange, it wasn't the exact right orange for Pilot Luke, and so I had to go back and change it. And I ended up using washes, and it really, really darkened things up. So I'm gonna say that this is not Luke at the Battle of Hoth taking down the at, at, -AT but I'm gonna say that actually Luke crashed another Z95 airspeeder in like the middle of the night during a blizzard, and that's why it looks really, really dark. I also tried a little bit of object source lighting coming off of this lightsaber. And there's two different ways really you can do lightsabers. You can either do white at the bottom with uh, the light, with the, the color of the blade blue illuminating up the top. I decided to go with that because I thought that having the majority of the lightsaber being blue would look really good on the tabletop because Luke has a blue lightsaber. But the way to make things look brighter is to have it be closer to white. And so a little bit of blue at the bottom with a blade of white would probably make it look maybe a little bit more like a lightsaber or maybe a little bit more powerful, but I don't know. That's that's an experiment I'll have to run maybe on the next Star Wars Legion model I paint. But ah, I absolutely love it. The free handing on his helmet was probably the hardest free handing I have ever done on any miniature. And I think it turned out pretty good. Although I made a slight lower error on the top part of his helmet. Although technically I made a big error because Really, I painted the helmet from Star Wars 77 A New Hope, not Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. Because if you look at Luke Skywalker's pilot helmet from Empire Strikes Back, it looks like he dropped it in a porta potty. Like it is completely covered in grime and gunk compared to how clean and prop perfect it was in the first movie. But I now have Pilot Luke. I have finished three more models from my vast pile of shame, but I feel good. These models were extra shameful as not only did I buy them, but I had to go out of my way to buy them. I fought for these models and then put them in a drawer and forgot about them until now. But I use this little trio of exclusives to push myself out of my painting comfort zone. But you know what else is great for that? 3D printing. There are tons of great STLs out there which are perfect for experimenting. And that is a tool I don't take advantage of nearly enough. I mean, Games Workshop charges like 35, 40 bucks for one of these things. Nick only charges me $30 to print a mini. I could have saved a lot of money. But at the end of the day, why do we buy models? Because it's fun. It's fun to buy models. It's fun to have them. It's fun to look at them. It's fun to play with them. And I think it's okay to indulge once in a while, but don't get carried away with limited edition. If a model catches your eye and you really know you want it and you want to paint it now, try to pick it up. But just know that if you miss out, that's fine. And there's always going to be new cool stuff right around the corner. Also, before I mention how you can get your own limited edition at Pilot Luke and the store Valhalla Hobby has one extra copy. And for the month of December, anybody who purchases any Star Wars Legion miniatures will be entered into a drawing to win their very own Pilot Luke. I'm now out from underneath my limited edition model pile of shame, but who knows? I wonder what the next year will bring in.